UAF Cooperative Extension Service. Extending knowledge, changing lives. As a livestock owner, there are times where you may be called upon to perform injections on your animals. This may be due to administering vaccines or certain medications. And there are rules that you should follow to make sure that those medications are administered appropriately and safely for your animal. Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Lunn, Extension Veterinarian for University of Alaska Fairbanks. Now while injecting your animal may seem daunting at first, I'm going to provide you with some simple tips to help you perform this efficiently, safely, and properly for your animal. Now the first step to performing injections in animals is to make sure that they're properly restrained. For cattle, we commonly use a chute. This way their entire body is restrained, they can't move side to side. This protects the animal and also protects you. If you're working with small ruminants and you don't have an appropriately sized chute, you can have a helper restrain the animal. The easiest way is to take the animal's rump, put it in the corner of the barn, and then put your arm around their neck and push them gently into the corner, or you can put a halter, tie their head, and kind of push their body into that corner. That way they're not moving side to side, front to back, and the person injecting the animal can safely administer the medication. If the animal's not properly restrained, they can excessively move. And as the needle is going into the animal, it can damage the skin, it can damage the muscle, and more importantly, if the animal moves at the wrong time, you may inject yourself and injure you. So proper restraint is essential to give a proper injection. As an owner, there's two common types of injections that you may be asked to perform. The intramuscular, where the needle is injected directly into the muscle and deposits a drug there, or the subcutaneous, where the needle is directed underneath the skin, not into the muscle. How will you know which injection you need to do? You need to look at the bottle of the drug. Now this may be a drug that was prescribed by a veterinarian, and your veterinarian would write specific instructions for what they want you to perform, or if it's one that you bought over the counter, the label will tell you whether it should be subcutaneous, intramuscular. It will also list the dose that you should give, the amount of milliliters that you're gonna draw up, and it will have the milk and slaughter withdrawal that's necessary for all livestock. Needle selection is an important part of giving an injection. We wanna make sure that we have the right diameter and length to ensure that the drug is being deposited properly, whether deep into the muscle tissue for intramuscular injections or directly under the skin for subcutaneous. If you're dealing with cattle greater than 500 pounds, we wanna use an 18 gauge, one and a half inch needle when giving intramuscular injections. That ensures that we have enough length to go deep into that muscle belly and put the drug where it needs to be. If you're giving an intramuscular injection to a calf or a small ruminant, we can use an 18 gauge, one inch needle. It's shorter and more appropriate for their muscle belly or we can use a 20 gauge one inch needle for intramuscular and small ruminants. If we're going subcutaneous and going directly under the skin, we want a shorter needle. We can still use an 18 gauge for cattle, but we wanna use one that's a one inch or preferably even a three quarter inch needle. That will make sure that the needle goes through the skin, but can't go into the muscle. For small ruminants, we can use an 18 or 20 gauge half inch needle, three quarter at the most. And again, that will get it directly under the skin, but not into the muscle where it would be inappropriately given. Meat quality assurance guidelines dictate that we now give all injections in livestock in the neck region. The boundaries of where you should place these injections are two to three inches below the top of the neck, so right along here, up to the edge of the front of the shoulder, so we come down along the edge of the shoulder, and then right above where the cervical vertebrae are. So if we follow those rules, that triangular area provides us enough room to give intramuscular and subcutaneous injections. For intramuscular injections, draw up the amount of drug prescribed, check for any major air bubbles. If you have air bubbles in the syringe, you can gently tap and they will rise to the top. And then you can move your plunger until you see liquid coming to the tip of the needle. Again, we need to find our triangular area that we're gonna use for injection. Two to three inches below the edge of the neck in front of the shoulder and above the vertebrae. That gives us our triangle. We're gonna go right in the middle. We want this to go perpendicular into the muscle. So have your syringe angled perpendicular and in one swift movement, you're going to push this needle into the hub. Once your needle is in the muscle, we're gonna draw back or aspirate 
If no blood is observed in the hub, it's okay to go ahead and inject your drug. For subcutaneous injections, again, we're gonna be within the boundaries of our triangle, but this time we wanna go just under the skin. And the easiest way to do that is to tent the skin or to gently pull it back, and that will make a pocket that you can inject into. Now be very cautious. If the animal jumps and your needle is angled incorrectly, you could actually inject yourself. So you wanna make sure that the needle is pointed away from your hand and going under the skin. Just like with an intramuscular injection, once the needle is under the skin, go ahead and aspirate, check and make sure there isn't any blood. If there isn't, go ahead and inject the drug. For intramuscular injections, we never wanna give more than 10 milliliters of drug in any one injection site. So if, for example, you had to give 30 milliliters of drug, we need to separate that into three separate injections. And each of those injections should be approximately four inches apart within our triangle. So you'd give 10 milliliters of drug here, 10 milliliters here, and finish up with 10 milliliters within that intramuscular injection. For sub-Q injections or subcutaneous, those can go up to 20 milliliters per site. And again, if you have to give more than 20, break that up. You can do a subcutaneous injection here and then a subcutaneous injection here. If you have to administer drugs for multiple days, it's best to alternate the side of the neck that you're working on. So if you have to inject on Monday, use the left side of the neck. Tuesday, right side. Wednesday, you could go back to the left side of the neck. For good biosecurity, you should make sure you use a fresh needle for each animal that you're giving an injection. There are some blood-borne diseases that can be transmitted from animal to animal. So be safe, use a clean needle, and when you're done, make sure that you properly dispose of the needle and syringe so nobody can get injured. For more on properly medicating livestock and other farm animal information, please visit the UAF Cooperative Extension Service website.